Scotland's Trossets Pier will look after him. A historic steamship moored waiting for passengers. Steamship Sir Walter Scott has been back sailing on Loch Catherine since June 2023, after two years of restoration. Join us as we set sail on this beautiful autumn day across the loch, exploring its beauty and some of its history. We chose a two hour return cruise from Trossachs Pier to Stranoglaca. The appeal was launched in 2021, SOS Save Our Steamship, to raise £500,000 to restore the 123 year old steamer. Together with public donations, a National Lottery Heritage Fund award of 130,000, and smaller grants from the Hugh Fraser Foundation and the Gordon Fraser Charitable Trust, work could commence to replace decking and the two cracked boils on this historic vessel. As with many projects, cost rose, and the restoration cost around 750,000 pounds. So, if you would like to help, the Steamship's Charitable Trust would appreciate donations. I'll drop a link in the description in the comments section. Anyway, sit back, enjoy your little cruise, and listen to the wonderful sounds of our lovely steam engine. The steamship was named after the poet whose famous poem Lady of the Lake about the Loch Catherine area was published in 1810. Born 250 years ago, his work along with other artists and poets of the day made Loch Catherine popular. So wondrous wild the whole might seem, the scenery of a fairy dream. The steamer was built at Denny's Yard in Dumbarton on the River Clyde. Temporarily put together with nuts and bolts, she underwent trials on the Clyde. Once the trials were completed, she was dismantled, ready to be transported to Loch Catherine. She was floated in sections up the River Leven and Loch Lomond to Inversnaid on barges. From Inversnaid, teams of horses hauled the steamship sections up and over the hills to Stranachlacher. The vessel was reconstructed with permanent rivets and launched into Loch Catherine in 1900. She cost £4,269, almost half of which, unsurprisingly, was transport costs. Catherine derives from the Gallic Catron, meaning Highland Robber. The loch is situated within a typical U-shaped valley, Strathgartney. Eroded by glaciers during the last ice age, this makes the loch very deep. 154 metres deep in fact, with narrow beaches and steep sides. Strathgartney is located within the Trossachs. Trossachs being Gallic for Bristly territory. Another famous name associated with Loch Catherine is Rob Roy McGregor. Rob Roy was born at Glengyle at the head of Loch Catherine. Along with many Highland clansmen aged 18, Rob Roy McGregor joined the Jacobite Rising of 1689 in support of Stuart King, James VII. Although they claimed victory in initial battle, 1689 saw defeat at Killiecrankie, and the rebellion deflated. McGregor's father was imprisoned, held on high treason charges for two years. McGregor became a respected cattleman. This was a time when cattle raiding and selling protection against theft were a common means of earning a living. McGregor took out a large loan to increase his own cattle herd, but his chief herder disappeared with the money. McGregor defaulted on his loan, resulting in being branded an outlaw. His wife and family were evicted from their house at Inversnaid before it was burned down. As principal creditor, James Graham, 1st Duke of Montrose, seized his lands. This drove McGregor to raid his cattle and rob his rents. McGregor was forced to surrender. In prison, he was later pardoned in 1727. Stranach like a pier. Here we stopped to pick up some passengers who have cycled along the lock edge to meet the boat.
Factor's Island. During Rob Roy's long feud with the Duke of Monroe's, he captured and imprisoned the Duke's Factor on this island, a Factor being an agent who collected rents. The wall was added to protect the island when the lock levels rose. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're just about to leave Stronachalaco. <laughs> The lock provides fresh water to the city of Glasgow. Construction started on the Lock Catron Water Project in 1855, built under the guidance of revered civil engineer John Frederick Bateman. A dam was built at the east end of the lock. This raised the natural summer level of Lock Catron by around 1.2 metres. Water then fed through an aqueduct system under gravity to a holding reservoir at Mugdock, then on to Glasgow. In October of 1859, the completed work was opened by Queen Victoria. Queen Victoria had requested a house be built with a jetty for her to stay in for a visit. A gothic royal cottage was dutifully provided. Her plan to stay in the little house never happened though. The 21 gun salute that welcomed her shattered all the windows. The level of the lock was raised again as Glasgow grew and required more and more water. Under parliamentary acts of 1883 and 1885, a new masonry dam was built just below the original when the level of Lock Catron raised to further 1.5 metres. A third raising of Loch Catron was needed, and between 1919 and 1929 another 1.5 metres was added to the Acre Dam, raising the city of Glasgow's allowance to 5.2 metres depth of water, providing nine months of storage supply. The loch is home to a lot of wildlife, including barnacle and grey like geese, buzzards, cormorants, as well as many other birds, and the elusive red and roe deer, as well as wild goats. As there is an abundance of fish in the loch, including brown trout and pike and arctic char, which are leftovers from the last ice age, ospreys hunt and live around the loch. Perfect trip for all the family. Why not add it to your list of things to do? Lady of the Lake and Rob Roy III also run trips on the lot. If you've enjoyed this video and want to support the channel, please hit the subscribe button. Thanks to everybody who has already subscribed.